Thanks for joining. Yeah, uh, in few minutes uh, we will invite Angelica to our interview. So she will be show up in few minutes. So in case uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ejam and I am the co-founder of Bojan. Actually, I'm my name is Ejam and okay i think i'm back sorry uh, i'm very ex excited i must say okay let's just in my turn we are waiting for angelica yes uh, in case you don't know who i am uh, hi angelica hi <laughs> how are you i'm good thank you thank you for having me yeah it's such a great honor to have you here with us today uh, we are going to wait for some more people to join it. Then probably we will give it a few minutes. Then we will start. Sounds so, good. So, yeah, how is life treating you? And how have you been up to since the last lockdown started? You know, yeah. It's been too long. It's okay. I feel like I've completely lost a sense of when this all began. It's just everything stretches into one long months doesn't it but it's okay i think i found quite a lot of comfort in work during this lockdown and i think it's if i didn't love the work i do i would have found it a lot harder so i found like safety and security in doing the work and it helps me just during the day just to focus on other things i think the relaxation time is what's hardest about lockdown the time when you want to go see your friends and go out for dinner and that's what's challenging but yeah. day been okay i have a little puppy at home so he's um kept me very busy yes i the... saw your um story in this morning you went for a walk with yeah uh, your dog. it was so cute by the way yeah he keeps me yeah. very <laughs> <laughs> yeah at least we have parks and we have opportunity to go for walking running so yeah we are lucky yeah, yeah. so uh I think we can start, right? Yeah, sure. I think we okay. can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay, thanks everyone for joining us today. My name is Ejam and I am the co-founder of luxury sleepwear brand Bojab. In honor of Women's History Month, we are kickstarting to our inspirational women series where we will be interviewing female leaders who are at the top of their uh, field in their respective industries. We will talk about their stories and their backgrounds in a very casual setting, just so we get to know them uh, better. Uh, today, I'm very excited to introduce businesswoman and best-selling author, Angelica Malin. And when I read uh, about her story, I was so amazed by how versatile and talented she is. Uh, that's why we wanted you to meet with her. And Angelica is the founder and editor-in-chief for one of London's top lifestyle magazines about time magazine, while also being a business, social media, and PR consultant, helping to empower ambitious career women everywhere. Thank you very much, Angelica, for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, it's really a great pleasure for us to have you here. So could you tell us about yourself and what you do so we and our audience uh, know a bit more about yourself? Sure. So I've been self-employed for eight years, straight out of university. I launched into not a very good job market. There was nothing really going at the time. And I think I thought to myself, I'll give it entrepreneurship a go on try starting my own thing without much of a plan um not really a business plan just a, a feeling that i wanted to create something around london that was about how to spend your time and what to do but in a really fun kind of like a friend in the know so that was the idea and i launched that in 20, march 2014 and i've done that for seven eight years but at the same time throughout my career done different things like writing a book which came out in January and hosting female empowerment festivals but I think in what I do in digital media having an open mind that it all moves so quickly so you can change you can launch new things you can try new projects and kind of having an open mind to 
always be curious and trying new things. Yeah. Uh, you started this journey very early and it's obvious, I mean, uh, uh, actually our story is similar. So I totally understand because you wanted to create your own journey and you made it. So yes. Uh, moving to the next question then, uh, what is it like being a successful businesswoman in your field? So it's interesting because I, I think success is a funny thing because I think success is very personal. Um, what might feel like success to one woman won't be the definition of success to another. And for me, success was not about making a certain amount of money or having a certain amount of readers, but it was actually about freedom and flexibility that I could work wherever I liked. I could take my laptop and I could go to another country and I could have the freedom to look after my own schedule and be kind to myself as well, to be able to take a day off if I needed to or spend time with my family. So that's like success on my terms. And I think something I write about in the book is that getting your own definition of success really helps you because then you're not comparing yourself to someone else or striving for things that don't actually matter to you. So the measure for me is how much freedom I feel and how excited I am for the day ahead of me. Um, but in my field in particular, it's not particularly male dominated. There's quite a lot of female journalists and women in media. Um, but I think it's doing it at a young age was quite intimidating because people didn't necessarily take me seriously. And there has been an element of proving yourself along the way. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand it because when I also started uh, my own business, um, my own brand, I was so young and I don't know, it was really challenging thing for me and I need to rediscover how to uh, get in touch with people once again because there are many people who are older, who were older than me, but at the end of the day, you, you, you just find your own style, actually. There is no any uh, definition. And you learn to be resilient. So when someone says, yeah. <laughs> oh, or they say you can't do that, instead of letting that kind of, you know, take away your confidence, you use that as, okay, I'm going to prove them. I, I need to get back up and I try again and I prove them wrong. And I think having that kind of thick skin are, makes you resilient at a young age. Yeah, really. And you can find the balance between resilient, but also be kind at the same time. Mm. So actually, yeah, I, I think it's a kind of, you know, good luck to uh, be able to just uh, start a business life uh, in this age. So, mm. yeah. And also, I would like to talk about your <laughs> book. I've already... Uh, reading it and I'm halfway through it because really I enjoy all uh, the experience of uh, the other entrepreneur ladies and the workbook section. It definitely uh, may, makes me re-evaluate myself actually. Uh, and there are lots of striking similarities between your book and my own journey I have made until now. So I Highly recommend uh, everyone uh, to read it, to be able to see the entrepreneurship uh, through your eyes, actually. So your book, She Made It, is the go-to guide for ambitious career women. What do you think are the biggest challenges facing women who want to launch and run their own business? So through the process of writing the book, I interviewed around 100 female entrepreneurs, many of which their case studies are in the book, um, but some which aren't. And I think the main few things that I realized through that research was um, self-confidence is a huge issue with women. Um, a lot of the women I spoke to who wanted to start businesses felt like they had to be totally ready before jumping in. They had to have all the experience or they had to have the the business plan or the finances and there was this hesitation to just kind of give it a go and I think it links to failure that there's a pressure women put on themselves about being scared to fail and having a kind of attitude that if something doesn't work out it's not your fault and to kind of get back up and to try a different approach so failure is a big thing that stops female entrepreneurs from even launching or continuing with a project and then 
The other main issues were around investment. So there's a huge investment gap for trying to raise finance. So how can we create spaces where women get more access to education around how to raise investment? They get more spaces to pitch and to actually raise the capital. So a very small amount of female only founded businesses actually raise venture capital funding in the UK. So there's lots of gaps in the kind of technologies created because, you know, femtech is huge but that's not getting the investment it needs so money is a big issue it's not just around confidence and mindset it's also the practical elements of how can women feel more supported to start their own businesses yeah it's really especially as you said femtech businesses are really i mean uh, in my opinion we need to for women actually we need to set the common goals especially for this kind of investment issues and we need to improve this sense of togetherness and you know women will have women so i think yes it will be i think it's also lifting some of the stigma and taboo about talking about these topics like traditionally women don't talk about money as openly and that leads to huge problems because they they have questions that aren't answered they don't know who to speak to and I've even seen it like in my friendship group my male friends will talk quite openly about money in front of each other in a way that women sort of don't and I think even you know it's a business problem but it's also just a social problem that how can we give women more confidence to talk about businesses about salaries about investments so that it isn't this big like stigma um conversation that they're not having yeah yeah i totally agree with you we will be able to be more open to talk about this kind of uh, especially money money issues actually yeah yeah and so do you have any role models or mentors you look up to? Um, I, ha- I have a few, but my main one I'd actually say is my mum's a portrait painter. Um, she has been her, her whole life. She went to art school in London and she went to be a portrait painter. So she's, she's amazing. She's painted lots of celebrities and, um, and like well-known dignitaries. But I think what inspires me about her is I had this female role model growing up who didn't have a traditional career, never worked in an office, always followed her creativity and passion. And I think her approach gave me the confidence that I didn't need to go get a job and I could just try being a writer and explore that. And I think I feel very lucky that that was the environment I grew up in. I speak to a lot of women now who are in a corporate job that they're not happy with. Mm. And when I question them and I consult with them and I say why are you in this often it's that their parents wanted them to do it they did it you know they did it in a they they followed a career path that they were told to do and that can just lead to a lot of problems so I feel very grateful that I had family they encouraged a kind of entrepreneurial route yeah it definitely gave you an on edge uh, on I mean give you an edge on others actually uh, and also my role model is also my mother and also she is my partner uh, at the same time with my sister is totally you know family but woman uh, we are all former uh, woman founder and uh, also I mean raising by very powerful and resilient and very dedicated woman really mm-hmm. uh, um, change your life and feeling that support you can do anything you want to, uh, in good intentions actually yeah and also i i saw your mother's portrait uh, and i told my sister that okay Melike, the first thing we are gonna do after lockdown is finished we need to go uh, to national portrait gallery and we need to check this out because yeah, because they're really, uh, you know, modern, and she has a style so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also you have aspiring entrepreneurs through your platform about time events such as she started it live festival and the, she started it podcast. Uh, actually, Angelica is just. 29 and has many uh, podcasts uh, you should definitely listen to one of these inspiring podcasts I, I'm sure you will find many common points uh, with you and so uh, how, import, how important is female representation to you? 
I think it's really important, but we're very lucky now that there are so many movements and spaces and communities for women to go to and support each other. And I've seen this real boom in it in the last few years. I, I started putting on female empowerment festivals about three years ago. And at the time when I was doing them, it wasn't a big conversation, this whole conversation around women in business and female empowerment. And I've seen really in the last three, four years, it just absolutely take off, and which I think is amazing. But at the same time, I think because it's taken off and it's become, become so popular to support women, there has been a little bit of a, um, a feeling like brands jump on the bandwagon of wanting to show female empowerment or um, to look like they're empowering women. And I think we have to be always striving to actually see changes in policy, you know, funds created for venture capital for women, like actual tangible things, not just words and sayings, because it's become like such a popular thing on Instagram and on Pinterest to support women, but actually you have to see it. And I think that's why the representation is really important that we still know at big kind of FTSE 100 companies, there's hardly any, any women at senior level. So although there's way more female entrepreneurs and self-employed women, actually in the corporate world, it's still, you know, not equal at all. So there's still a lot of work to be done. Yeah, actually, you, you, I mean, telling is not enough. Also, you need to show that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, for our company, we also have just women employees, and we just serve for women. So uh, we came this point with our, you know, women uh, employees, and it's like, uh, we are just the ring of the whole chain. And if we united, I mean, we can do whatever we want. Also, I mean, there are many nice charities like Women for Women. We also sponsored a sister from New Congo. And um, yeah, and if you want to do something for female, uh, female empowerment, I mean, you can do many things. You can, and also you are mentioning in your book, you are kind of a person who is in action. So this is what, what is, uh, you do actually. So you, yes, I totally. Yeah, and I think if you are someone who sees a problem that you want or a conversation that you think isn't happening, put on your own event, create your own community. Like when we see problems around us, we have to try and create solutions through our own work. And that's how my festivals came about. But I'm sure there's loads of things in everyone's lives that they see. And I think holding on to those problems and trying to think what creative solution can I provide that will empower women, that will move the conversation along. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, you just um, come up with many different and detailed solutions uh, with those uh, women also, because, you know, women are more detailed and more, uh, yeah, I, I think you have a, a festival next week, uh, if so, I remember. Yes, yeah. I will definitely, definitely watch uh, this festival and I'm sure I will uh, learn many, many things. I really can't wait to hear the experience of those ladies also. So, and yeah, and Angelica, when it comes to female empowerment, it's something you are passionate about. We wonder how you have personally over overcome the challenges or stereotypes during your career. So I think the main challenges I've faced probably is in myself as a founder of, you know, overcoming at points self-doubt or low confidence or worrying that this isn't the right way ahead. Um, and especially when you start to have employees and you're trying to manage a team, that is a new challenge because nobody teaches you how to be a manager. You learn on the job and you make mistakes. And I think the people management side of entrepreneurship is the hardest thing. So I wouldn't say there's been like very clear challenges in my path that other people have put there. I think the challenges for me have all been in my own head of how can I step up? How can I improve? How can I be the best leader, the best version of myself? And I think that's where having a support network is really important. You need other people that you can go to and get their advice or ha ask them how they do it. So for me, finding other women who are running businesses has been amazing. 
because without that I think I would have felt really lost and there are points of my journey where I thought it would have been easier just to go work for someone else you know to have a nine to five to have a salary and not to have the stress but of course you have the stress but you also have the excitement and the fulfillment yeah. of working for yourself so it's it's the price you pay I think but those are the challenges it's kind of in myself to grow yeah and i think keeping that you know excitement is so important actually of, of course it's kind of stressful sometimes but i mean you uh, i mean you need to experience uh, some new things and you need to put your out of yourself to that from that comfort zone actually mm -hmm. I mean, you need to encounter more challenges, more obstacles, maybe, but this is what uh, make you move forward. Totally. Also, once you've experienced it once, you've dealt with that problem. And the next time it happens, you're like, well, I've, I've done this once before. I will overcome it again. So those challenges, you know, they get easier as time goes on because you, t you tend to now... In eight years, I think I've experienced everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. So now I feel a lot more like resilient and able to overcome things to draw on my own experiences. Yeah, and also uh, it's also really nice. Uh, you already experienced when someone comes to you and ask your advice, you know, because you just passed uh, through all those ways and mistakes. So totally. Yeah, and sharing all those experiences are so nice, yeah. Uh, and also, uh, going back to your festival, can you tell us a bit more about it, about your festival? Sure, so um, it's called She Started It Live, and we usually do it in person, of course, but this year we're doing it as a virtual festival, so it's hosted on a private community on Facebook, um, and it's live-streamed. And it's two days and it's everything around business, social media, marketing, um, and also some sort of self-help and um, well-being. We have a Pilates class as well, those kind of things. And it's a festival for women who are entrepreneurs or self-employed or they're thinking about it and they just want to get some advice. And we have speakers all throughout the day and panel talks and keynotes. Um, normally when we put it on in person, it's a great um, networking opportunity. I think it's been hard in the last year with COVID to not be able to provide the same experience as you can in an in-person event. But for us, it was important to still be able to put it on. So if anyone would like to come, they can message me and I'll send you the link for the tickets. Um, but that's happening Friday and Saturday of next week. Next, next week. Okay. So we can read all details through your uh, About yeah. Time magazines, right? Bye. On your website. Okay. We will also be there 100% sure. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, as a 29-year-old entrepreneur, you have already achieved so much. What is the career highlight of your so far? Oh, that's difficult. But the one thing I want to say about age is I think we sometimes get a little bit obsessed with being young and doing something. And we get like in our heads a bit that I have to do this by a certain age or I'm too late to do this. And I think if we can take some of the pressure away from needing to do anything at a certain time and thinking that there's any set timeline for anything, I think that will just help everyone to follow their passions and to change careers if they want to and to do something that makes them happy. So although I feel lucky that I've done stuff at a young age, I also think that I could see myself changing careers at 40 or 50 and constantly being curious and wanting to try new things so I think that's important um personal highlights oh I don't I think anything that is around connection like uh, our first festival that we put on in London in person it was only about 100 women but I think it, for me it's something that really stands out of the connection in the room where everyone was talking everyone was sharing their experiences some people were like at points in the talks were crying because it was conversations that they hadn't heard and they felt seen. There was just so much happened with the energy in the room. And I think yeah. that was a very special thing for me because I knew that there was these conversations that needed to happen, but I wasn't quite sure how to facilitate them. And that was the first time that, that I'd seen that in person. And that to me will always feel more important than revenue or sales, to be honest. My work is about feeling fulfilled and connected. Yeah. 
Yeah, and th this is what you motivate, and this is what you uh, keep going forward. Actually, I think creating values and uh, you know, be, as you said, being connected, or if if you just put a little seed, someone uh, to uh, boost them. I don't know. It 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 means a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's all about connection, sharing, creating, supporting. Totally. Yeah. Uh, I I really understand uh, what you want to say because also uh, you know discovering that excitement that ambition is it is really something very precious to find actually mm -hmm. it is it is yeah. and I, although we are more connected because of Instagram and social media the the connection that you get in person with someone is so special and I think we shouldn't forget to try and connect when we can with each other in a physical sense because sometimes I think we rely so heavily on social media to talk to people and they aren't the realest versions of conversations yeah so Angelica finally uh, what is your one rule in business to live by um I think my main one is curiosity I think if you stay curious then you always bring a kind of fresh enthusiasm to your work and not being too prescriptive or precise about which direction you want to go in, but allowing also a bit of curiosity to take you along the way. And um, taking off the pressure of having a set path, but allowing yourself to kind of flow and let, also let the universe guide you to an extent. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, and curiosity makes you, you know, uh, it makes you researching some new things and connecting with new people. I don't know, you just discover some uh, subjects, topics, or uh, new cultures you have never heard before, or, uh, yeah, curiosity. It's, it's, I think everything just uh, starts with curiosity, actually. Totally. Yeah, and uh, protecting that enthusiasm. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And, uh, and I think I... Also, in my opinion, the thing that I see when I look uh, at you and when I read about your achievements and your book, you just uh, you you just start and you just experience the thing the the the, uh, the things you want to achieve. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you can never wait for being perfect. Actually. Totally. But, I think. Yeah. We yeah, that women love to plan which I think is true but that with in business can actually hold you back because you want to get the perfect business plan you want to have everything planned out and you can talk yourself out of an idea by planning too much so sometimes you do just have to go for it if you think it's a good idea if you think that you could sell it just go for it rather than trying to plan everything meticulously yeah and you are saying on your book that I mean, you just listen to your gut feeling, intuition, you know, instinct. This is what I, uh, what my mom always tells me, actually. She's like, if you just believe it, it, it is true, you just uh, go with it. Then you will figure out at the end yeah. of the day. You will find your own way. It's really a very important thing, actually. And as you said, self-confidence. It's also, I think it's all about this. Mm. the gut instinct is so important we sometimes forget to listen to our gut and there is always something there is something inside of us that tells us whether or not a decision feels right so trying to find ways to connect with your gut I think is so important yeah uh, I, I'm so happy to know you uh, Angelica I know it's short uh, interview but I know there are many more things talk i really want to talk uh, with you and hopefully uh, one day i would like to uh, meet with you face to face actually <laughs> thank you so yeah. yeah and uh, thank you and it was an absolute pleasure to have you here and thank you everyone who joined us uh, today and being a part of our interview uh, I'm so excited, actually, and I'm so happy to share my first experience with Angelica and uh, everyone who attended this initi initiative. And so also, we will be uploading this video on IGTV as well as our website. 
so you can watch our conversation with Angelica whenever you you like. And remember, uh, we will be back next Friday at 3 p.m. again with the founder of Thyself and Thyself Man, Chloe Pierre. My partner and my beloved sister Melike will be hosting her next Friday. So yeah, um, uh, by the way, yes, uh, if, if there is any question, we are so happy to answer, by the way. Thank you for saying it. Also, they love my book. Thank you. It's very kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I will keep reading it because really, I mean, it's like, um, you know, gymnastic workout. <laughs> yeah, book you read quickly because it has the workbook. So you have to kind of get pen and paper. And that was the idea. Yeah, and you're saying take your own notes and use as your, you know, whatever you want. You just write down. And I, I already did. Okay. I will show you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, thank you, everyone, and I wish you a, have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you again. Bye. <laughs>